Hello, my name is Ripley. Welcome to the video. What's up, schmucks? It's Halloween! But before we get all spooky, I'd like to take a moment and tell you about the G-Words Podcast. The G-Words Podcast is my wacky little podcast with no real rhyme or reason. We just kind of do whatever we want because we can. It's just random conversations left and right. It's a lot of fun, so check the links below and see if any of it piques your interest. Anyway, let's get on with the Halloween special. This year, I really wanted to do a Halloween movie marathon, like I did for Christmas last year, but I just couldn't find the time because I have a big project that's in the works. So I guess we'll do a Halloween marathon next year. However, despite all of that, I really wanted to do something for Halloween. So I figured we could take a look at every Halloween episode of Bob's Burgers, one of my favorite TV shows of all time. We're gonna start all the way from season three and go all the way up to season 12 because seasons one and two don't have Halloween episodes. That, that, that That's why we're starting with three. So what we're gonna do is run through each Halloween episode and in the end we will rank them and truly determine which Halloween episode is the best. Obviously none of this is subjective, it's all objective, my ruling is final and if you disagree with me you are wrong, obviously. Anyway, let's get into it. So our first Halloween episode opens with Teddy asking Bob and Linda if they'll be attending his Halloween party that night, but Bob shoots him down as he intends to take Tina, Jean, and Louise trick-or-treating. But the kids opt to go on their own, which leaves Bob available, so he and Linda end up attending Teddy's party. Bob needs a costume, however, so Teddy provides him one. As things get to going, the kids decide to head over to King's Head Island, where all the rich people live in the hopes of scoring all the bust and candy, instead of all the lame candy they've been getting all night. But back at Teddy's party, Teddy finds his pet guinea pig dead, and it leads to the best joke of the episode. Teddy, let me try. I have good lungs. <gasps> <laughs> <laughs> Teddy then decides that someone murdered his guinea pig, and so the A plot of this episode becomes a little murder mystery kind of thing, while the kids get the ball rolling on the B plot. Over at King's Head Island, the local kids warn the Belcher kids of what is called the Hell Hunt, where all the teens hunt the younger kids with water balloons filled with pee. Shenanigans ensue for both plot lines, but Teddy's party murder mystery is really engaging and really fun, and I think it's definitely the stronger of the two plot lines. It ends up being revealed that it was Bob. In his effort to put the costume on, he crushed Teddy's guinea pig. I, I didn't even know I did it. I couldn't feel her underneath this stupid fat suit that you made me wear oh, 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 oh god damn it Meanwhile, we get to see the Belcher kids save the local kids from the teens, but Louise takes it a step further and decides to torment them a little more, because that's just how she is. But she pushes it too much and they end up in a chase. The local kids pull a Han Solo and bail out the Belchers at the last second, then we get this hilarious bit of Louise throwing this cell phone into a moving car. and missing. Bob ends up coming clean to Teddy, and Teddy accepts that he wasn't a great owner to his guinea pig, and he moves on rather quickly. The Belchers regroup at their apartment and hang out after a long night of Halloween shenanigans. Overall, this is a really good episode. It's pretty standard Bob's Burgers stuff, but as for a Halloween special, it does what it has to do. It's very funny, it's very entertaining, and it's good. All right, next. <laughs> So this episode opens up by setting up the characters tied to the A-plot, the Belcher kids, Daryl, Andy and Ollie, and the antagonist of the episode, Millie. The kids are excited for a night of trick-or-treating while at the restaurant, Bob and Linda work to finish the costume for the kids. Millie is obsessed with Louise and is a rarely returning character for the show. I think she's only in maybe four episodes of the whole series, but she's a really fun foil to Louise, and this episode was her introduction, and I think she's a really good antagonist. More Teddy, what are you doing right now? Adjusting myself without anyone noticing? Watching Mort adjust himself. I really wish this show had more of Mort going forward. He's pretty prominent in the early seasons, but he only makes sporadic appearances as the show goes on. Anyway, as Halloween night draws closer, Bob and Linda request Teddy and Mort's help to finish the kid's costume in time. Also, this is the best joke of the episode. Oh, I need to grab the dragon eyes from the fort. Why are they in the fort? I spray painted them in there. Oh. oh. And it provides a reason for the kids to go to the fort where this plotline really kicks into gear. As the kids are hanging out in the fort, a truck backs into the fort and traps them inside. They're almost saved though by Millie, who happens to come by. But Louise has an outburst which pisses her off, and Millie decides to not help the kids and leave them trapped inside the fort. Shenanigans ensue with both the adults and the children, and we get this fun moment that cements Andy and Ollie as the best supporting characters in the show. Andy's still in there! Let him out! We can't! Then we'd all get spidered! I'll never forget you, Andy. I'll be with you every time you look in the mirror. What? Because we look alike. Never oh, mind. Oh, no, I get it now. I didn't want those to be my last words. <gasps> wait a minute, wait a minute. What the? 
Hold on. Andy, get up. They're fake spiders. Oh. Ugh, thought I was a goner. I felt you die. <laughs> the kids try to escape, but Millie is ready and their plan fails, which leads Louise to the conclusion that one of them is a rat. It ends up being revealed that it was Daryl who betrays them after Millie promised him freedom, but then doesn't give it to him. This is something not exclusive to this episode, but it's part of the reason why I love this show overall, and it's that I love these little moments that make Bob and Linda feel so real and relatable. They interact with each other and act like a real married couple and real parents, and I really enjoy that. But there's also a fun, fantastical, cartoony element to them, and I think it all blends very well. It makes them a very wholesome couple. Millie leads Bob and Linda away from the fort, but it gives the kids a chance to think of a new escape plan. Hmm. Wait, guys. Take a look at this. What is it, rat? You see those buttons on the truck? Yeah. We just have to find a way to hit the up button, and boom, the roof is lifted. And how exactly are we going to hit the button, huh? You going to snitch on it? No. We use this. Daryl, you're my favorite kind of rat. A rat with a hanger. However, they mess up and lower the truck's hatch thingy and escape just in time before it crushes them, although Andy and Ollie each lose a shoe in the process. The Belcher kids return home to Bob and Linda and they all share some candy and play around, more moments cementing how wholesome this family really is. What's not as wholesome is what Millie sees when she returns to the fort, but the Belchers are waiting for her and end up winning the day. Who said that? The ghost of us! This is Jean's ghost! Ah! We don't appreciate being killed. Ooh, this is Tina's ghost. Oh no! Oh, I didn't mean to kill you. I was just gonna keep you in there until you got old. Give us your candy, you nutcase. All of it? Or, or do you just want some of it? Or do you want to trade? All of it! Here, take it! Ah! <laughs> Overall, this is a really fun episode with a lot of really great jokes, fun character moments, and a really satisfying ending. I love it. All right, next. This episode begins with the kids talking about their Halloween plans and Bob and Linda decorating the restaurant when an exterminator shows up. However, the exterminator thinks that the restaurant is haunted, so he takes off, leaving Bob annoyed, but the rest of the Belgers are excited for a ghost. I feel really bad for Bob, honestly. More often than not, he's the only rational person, which I know is intentional, but it does get annoying at a point. Anyway, so the family plays with a Ouija board and meet the ghost named Jeff, a teenage boy, and I love that Tina will literally fall in love with anyone and anything, which is the point of her character, but it is incredibly amusing. So they trap Jeff in a shoebox and the kids take him to school to show off and here it becomes clear that Louise is behind all of this obviously. I really like that Louise is constantly and consistently tricking and outsmarting older kids and sometimes adults as well. She's great. Meanwhile, Bob and Linda become the host of a couple of paranormal investigators who end up stirring up some business for them as they look for signs of a ghost. Then we get Tina realizing Jeff isn't real, but also she's still a little unsure it seems as she initially thinks this butterfly is Jeff and makes out with it. <laughs> Good stuff. A few shenanigans ensue before Tammy takes Jeff away from Tina, which puts her in a slump. Louise confesses that she was behind Jeff the whole time, and we get some banger costumes in this episode. Costume fashion show! Get out here, kids! Here comes Jean! Turner and Hooch! Half dog, half Hanks, all cop! More like Turner and cute! Come here, you! Oh, here comes Louise! Shiny scorpion person, wow! I'm Ryan Gosling from the major motion picture trailer Drive. So violent, but so well reviewed. Louise intends to prank Tammy and the other kids as revenge for upsetting Tina, but Tina also sets something up to teach them a lesson, and she gives a speech to them all, which is something all the Tina-centric episodes do, and I don't care for it. Back at the restaurant, the investigators wrap their stuff up and try to weasel out of paying their tab. Well, Bob, we have a lot of data to sift through. We gotta get back to the lab. Let's uh, close out your tab here. You guys ate uh, 11 burgers. All delicious. We were about to settle the bill with you too, Bob. Let's see, we did a beta wave test, a black light scan, and an audio spectral recording. With all these services rendered, looks like it's gonna be a wash. Bye, Bob, bye, Linda. You can't leave, you have to pay for your food. We can't pay you. Hmm, why? Should we tell him, Phil? Mm-hmm. We've been dead for 12 years. Oh my God, Bobby the ghost. I knew it. Bye. Wait, 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 hold on. Watch out, Bobby, they're gonna walk right through you. Do you take credit cards? Ah, oh, they're not ghosts. This is a fine episode. It's more on the weaker side of the spectrum, but it is still good and does have some fun moments. Anyway, let's move on. 
This episode opens with Louise stating how she's never been scared at a haunted house before, but Bob and Linda assure her that this year's haunted house will be the one. The Belchers arrive at a house in an unfamiliar neighborhood, and Bob and Linda perform their little haunted house for the kids, but the kids are unimpressed, so they decide to scare their parents instead. The Belchers decide to leave, but find their car with a flat tire, a creepy guy at the end of the driveway, and no hope for a tow truck as the power goes out, and all the weird sounds from the basement are making it all a lot worse. The Belchers go to investigate, and I want to mention how I love the family dynamic and the interactions in this episode. It's top-notch stuff. After getting spooked a little, the Belchers run upstairs and hide in a bathroom, which leads to more fun interactions and some good back and forth. It's something bad. It's gonna kill us in this bathroom and it's gonna, it's gonna be easy to clean up because of the tile floor. Linda, you're not helping. Also, will you take off that ball cap? It's freaking everyone out. I didn't even know I still had it on. It's comfortable. As footsteps get closer, the family decides to go out the window, but only to find some hooded figures waiting for them and also this big ring of fire. As Louise starts to unravel and freak out, a shadowy figure approaches from behind and gives Louise a good, solid scare. Ah! Louise? Louise, sweet, sweet, baby! What is happening? Gotcha. Then we get the big reveal that the whole thing was a setup to finally scare Louise and everyone was in on it. Usually I don't enjoy moments like these where in the third act all is revealed in great detail, but here they sprinkle in some really good jokes and it makes the whole thing quite entertaining. Like Mort's back joke. This gets me every time. Like this, this floored me the first time and it floors me now. Mort, how did you make that crazy croaking sound? That actually came out of me. I threw my back out when I was making that big boom sound. <laughs> I also really like this moment of the family hugging. I just, I, I love this family, man. They're perfect. The Belchers go home and we get this song from Boys For Now, the in-universe boys to men slash in sync slash generic boy band group. But this song low key kind of slaps. It's on Spotify. I highly recommend you give it a listen. It's, it's genuinely good. Girl, it's free. And the family dancing in the kitchen is such a cute moment. I love it. I really love this episode. I think it's amazing. I think it's consistently funny. It has some awesome family moments between the Belchers, has a really fun twist, and a really good end credit sequence. All right, let's move on. So full disclosure, I have no thoughts on this episode. Like straight up, no thoughts, head empty. So let's just get through this quickly. The A plot of this episode involves Tina getting into witchcraft, which results in several shenanigans ensuing. But the B plot revolves around a mystery of somebody stealing Bob's jack-o'-lanterns and him trying to figure out who and why. And overall, the B plot is just much more engaging and interesting. It ends up being Mr. Fish Odor, who is collecting jack-o'-lanterns to have a little display going on in his mansion, which is a fun little twist. But as for the Tina plot line, it's just far less interesting. She thinks witchcraft is improving her life, and then she gets all cocky and confident, but ends up slighting the street crossy lady. What is what is this job called? Like, what, what is this profession? Is Does it have a name? So the street crossy lady curses Tina and puts Tina in an anxious headspace, which doesn't go well for her as she competes in the school costume contest. But it's a Tina episode, so we have to have a big speech at the end about the lesson and what have you. The street crossy lady ends up lifting the curse and Tina is free. And then that's the end of the episode. There's, there's not much going on here. Overall, I think this episode is just kind of bland. It's not particularly funny or interesting, and the B-plot is a lot more engaging than the A-plot, but it's a B-plot, so you don't get a lot of it. Anyway, let's move on. This episode opens up by telling us that Bob's on a bunch of painkillers, Teddy will be babysitting him, Linda wants to impress the kids, the kids want to have a fun night, there's a loose alpaca roaming around, and there's a titular wolf roaming the streets, which in turn causes a scarcity of trick-or-treaters. There's a lot of setup for what's going to be going on in this episode, but none of it really stumbles over itself, and they get it out of the way rather quickly. Also, I love this bit. I'll help him get into the bathroom. No problem. You can count on me. I'll even hold your penis if you need me to, Bobby. I don't need you to hold my penis, Teddy. The kids' costumes in this episode are awesome, especially Tina's. No, Mom, I'm the guy from No Country for Old Men. Ooh, a hunky killer. The best kind, huh? Ooh, Tina's a zombie wearing my clothes for some reason. Yeah, I'm a mombie. And with everything set in place, we're off. Trick-or-treating goes slow, so Linda decides to take the kids searching for the wolf, but Bob begins suspecting that Teddy is the wolf due to how loopy he is with the painkillers. Both plot lines are really fun in this episode, but I think I enjoy Bob having a mental breakdown the most. As Linda and the kids search, they run into Randy, who was introduced all the way back in season one, episode three. And I love the appearance of Randy. It comes out of nowhere. You don't expect it, but also 
it makes total sense that the wannabe filmmaker would be out trying to get footage of the wolf. It clicks perfectly. And I do enjoy the reoccurrence of Gene being attracted to his own mom. Like, yeah, it's weird and a little unsettling, but it is funny. Mother, I've never been more attracted to you. So the kids and Linda find the alpaca and not the wolf, which leads them to the conclusion that there never was a wolf. Meanwhile, Bob handcuffs Teddy to the coffee table and makes a break for it. Bob ends up hiding in the park where he sees the wolf, but just before Mr. Fishoder and his brother Felix come to retrieve it as it belongs to them. Everybody regroups at the Belcher's apartment and Bob tells everyone about his night, but no one believes him as he was all drugged up on painkillers. And the episode ends with everyone just kind of chilling in the living room. Overall, I really like this episode. It's fun and has two really entertaining plot lines, although the B-plot with Teddy and Bob I find a lot more enjoyable. Alright, let's get on with the next one. The episode opens with everyone getting ready for Halloween, and we get this really nice bromance moment between Jimmy Pesto and Trev. I love it. So, what's that supposed to be? An ugly ghost or something? It's a mummy. Mm, looks like an ugly ghost. I spent all weekend on it. You know what? Leave it there. It's, uh, terrifying. Oh, uh, okay. We also get this passing line about the dentist, Dr. Yap, which will become more important later, but I didn't even tweak at this the first time I watched it. Hey, here's a flyer from your dentist. Dr. Yap is offering to pay you a dollar a pound for your Halloween candy. Why the hell would we do that? We then get the setup for Teddy's role in this episode, as his handyman rival has a job next door, and Teddy feels a need to compete against him. Like most of these episodes, the kids' costumes are awesome, especially Louise's. I love it. Who are you, Louise? I'm a dragon with a girl tattoo. Ooh! Oh, you flipped the script! What do you mean? The kids go trick-or-treating and gradually meet up with their gang of friends, but only to learn that people in varying costumes have been stealing their bags of candy all night long, which eventually leads to them hunting down the thief. Meanwhile, Teddy's plotline gets a moving, and it has some really great moments, in particular, this conversation. We're gonna show up that handsome bastard. You, you think he's handsome? You don't? I don't know. I didn't... I mean, he's not really my type. He's got a good body, though. Are you kidding? He has a great body! Yeah, but without the body, you wouldn't say he's handsome. I would. And also this moment. This bad boy's got some real power, so I'm just gonna start out nice and slow. Oh, So after the kids chase and catch the candy thief, they find out that it was none other than their dentist, Dr. Yap. And I love Yap. I think he is absolutely hilarious. Meanwhile, it's also revealed that Teddy's rival handyman was actually trying to impress Teddy, as he actually really admires his work, which is a pretty wholesome twist. So the kids get all their candy back and they start giving it out to all the kids on the street, and we get a pretty solid ending to a pretty solid episode. Overall, I like this episode. I think the mystery of the candy thief is really fun, and I think the episode is consistently funny. Teddy's plotline is really fun, and the reveal of Yap being the thief I personally really love. Okay, next episode, here we go. This is another Tina-centric episode that I'm not crazy about, so let's just get through it. The episode centers around Tina wanting to hang out with her classmates on Halloween. So to get on their good side, she makes fun of a pig she's supposed to dissect, which causes her some immense guilt, which ends up lingering around and giving her nightmares and such. And this episode's kind of a spoof on Nightmare on Elm Street, with some very similar imagery. The Bob and Linda plotline, however, I really enjoy. I think it's great. In that plotline, Bob has some earwax that's clogging his ears, and Linda is determined to get it out, which leads to some really fun shenanigans. Also, the kids' costumes, they're not very good this episode. And then, because it's a teen episode, she gives a big speech in the end about something or another, I don't know, I zoned out. Also, she kind of just gets over her guilt, like it just kind of dissipates. Whatever, I don't care. Overall, I don't like this episode. I don't think it's very funny, I don't think it has any great moments other than the Bob and Linda stuff, and there's nothing in it that really makes it stand out. Anyway, let's move on. This is an episode I don't have a lot of thoughts on, but I do really like. So the episode revolves around Louise being owed candy by a particular household that stiffed her the last couple of years. So she hatches a plan to get what she's owed, even if Tina doesn't approve. Meanwhile, Teddy and Linda decide to give blood and convince Bob to donate too, despite him being scared of needles and blood. The kids end up having to drop off a takeout order at a local hotel and meet Dolores, who they eventually learn tries to summon her dead husband's ghost every year so that she can banish him to hell for cheating on her the night he died. Tina ends up making a deal with Louise that if she can solve what really happened that night, the kids don't have to go through with Louise's revenge plan. I'm gonna let the episode tell you how it all went down because I just, I don't feel like recapping it and it's easier to just kind of put the clips together. I'm, I'm really tired, leave me alone. It seemed like we were in our own little world. He was tossing nuts into the air and catching them in his mouth to impress me. Roger went to get us drinks and he never came back. Finally, someone told me that they saw him at the elevator with I Dream of Genie. I couldn't believe it. I was devastated. The next day, I read in the paper that he died in this very room. He was murdered? No, it was cardiac arrest. There was no sign of foul play. 
But I bet there was some foreplay, the creep. I bet I dream of Jeannie was a doctor. He used to have male doctors. And I bet he was helping Roger because Roger is having an allergic reaction. Tina, I think your stupid story might be right. Roger ate some peanuts, started getting symptoms. He goes to the bar. He's sweaty, woozy. And Dr. Genie Man notices and says maybe he needs to lie down, so... He helps Roger to the elevator so he can go to his room and get some rest. Anyway, while the kids do their thing, we get some really good stuff with Bob at the donation bus. <sighs> I can do that. <sighs> Almost there. Oh, come on. Oh, oh, oh. <laughs> Overall, this is a fun episode. It's not amazing or bad, and it sits comfy at being a good but adequate episode. All right, let's wrap this up with the most recent Halloween episode of Bob's Burgers. Here we go. This episode opens with a flashback to 27 years ago, where we see Linda and her sister Gail at the scene of a bunch of smashed up pumpkins and promising to never speak of it again. But then in the present day, Linda and Gail are freaking out because they each get a letter with the words pumpkin smasher written on it. So they set out to get to the bottom of it and see who knows what they did. Kind of like a, I know what you did last summer kind of thing. The movie, by, by the way, not, not the show. The show's probably bad. I don't know. I haven't seen it. We also get another flashback, but I especially love the heading of 27 years ago, but three minutes earlier. I think that's great. So Bob's plotline in this episode revolves around him giving out subpar candy until he folds and buys some good candy. But the Belcher kids want some, and they get nervous about losing it all to the local kids. Yeah, the B-plot in this episode isn't very interesting, but it is funny, and Bob having stashed a bag of candy away specifically for the kids is a really cute moment. Linda and Gail end up visiting people from their past to find out who's onto them, and shenanigans ensue. But we end up getting two major reveals. Reveal number one, Linda actually went to smash her own pumpkin 27 years ago, because she learned she was going to win the pumpkin carving contest and she knew it would crush Gail, so she went to stop that from happening, but it all got out of hand. And the second reveal involves the letters. It was Gail's life coach, who hoped that if Gail confronted her past and her guilt, it could help her move forward in all areas of her life. A and Linda was dragged in just for the hell of it. It's, that's not really explained. And the episode ends with a fun song from Linda. This is a good episode. It's a little average, but thoroughly entertaining, and it has some good moments. All right, now it's time to do a final ranking of these and determine which Bob's Burgers Halloween special really is the best one. Okay, so let's start from the bottom in which episodes are least impressive and move up to the top in the episodes that I think are the best. All right, bottom of the list at number 10, Pig Trouble and Little Tina. I just didn't like it. That's, that's all I got. Then at number 9, Teen A Witch. I feel bad putting the Tina episodes at the bottom, but they are the episodes I enjoy the least, so I kind of have to. At number 8, we got The Pumpkin Ning. The pump, the Pumpkin in Ning? The Pumpkin in Ning? The Pumpkin in Ning. Yeah, that's what we're going with. It's a fine episode, but the more I thought about it, the more I realized that nothing about it really stands out. I do like it, but there is nothing particularly special about it. <laughs> As for number six, Tina and the Real Ghost. Okay, so not all the Tina episodes are at the bottom. This episode is fairly funny. It's not a particularly standout episode, but I do like it. So, number six. Now we're in the top five. So, at number five, Full Bars. Bob's Burgers first Halloween special is really good. It's funny and has two solid plot lines going on that are really entertaining. Good stuff. At number four, we get The Wolf of Wharf Street. I really like this episode, and the Bob and Teddy stuff here I think is fantastic. Top three, here we go. As for number three, I'm gonna give it to Nightmare on Ocean Avenue Street. This episode features some really hilarious moments and has a great reveal of Yap being the candy thief. I also thoroughly enjoy Teddy's plotline in this episode. I think it's really good and it wraps up on a really satisfying way. So, number three. For number two and the second best Halloween episode, I'm giving it to Fortnite. This episode is hilarious from beginning to end and I really love all the various character interactions on the kids side of things, but also on the adult side of things. And simply put, it's a great episode. Okay, and and number one, my favorite Halloween episode of Bob's Burgers, The Hauntening. I think this episode is perfect. I think it's a perfect Bob's Burgers episode. I think it's just, I think it just nails everything. It features great jokes, it has a solid plot, a great reveal, and the episode does my favorite thing that this show does, and it's that it displays the Belchers being a wholesome family. And it is for those reasons that I think The Hauntening is the best Bob's Burgers Halloween special. And that's that. That is every Bob's Burgers Halloween special so far, reviewed and ranked. I really love this show, as I said up top. I think it's fantastic. And I look forward to reviewing all the Thanksgiving episodes for a Thanksgiving special. But until then, thank you for watching, have a fantastic day, and happy Halloween. Turkey and I will see you soon.
Happy Halloween.